we are doing something new today. We're gonna do a, a little Q&A session about the bike. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another vloggy vlog. That's right, we are doing another episode of riding bikes. And look at this beauty. Let's get on it and talk about it. Oh. Kick stands up. There we go. Wasn't even sure how to start it at first. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful Sunday, and I want to make sure my mirrors are operational. This is obviously not my bike, and I thank my buddy for letting me get a little taste of it. So, here we go. Interesting, interesting. All right, so like I said, we are on a 2022 Sh Triumph Street Triple RS. And we're going to do a quick little gander here, there, and everywhere. Get around town. Get it up to speed. Talk about it. And uh, for those who are not familiar with these riding bikes episodes, this is by no means a, a review or any sort of a, you know, anything like that. This is just a, a little baby cruise. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go straight. Go. go. Alright, right away. That's the beauty of these uh, riding bikes episodes is that right away we're in the thick of it. You know what I mean? Um... Okay, so, 2022 Speed Triple. Sorry for the bit of a rough start, but we're obviously got 765 cc's on this baby. And uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful, naked, naked sport bike. And she feels like she pulls. She feels like she pulls. And I'm gonna try to do a little pull here before I start uh, start yapping about the very few facts that I know. But right away, uh, I'm sorry if I'm already repeating myself, but this is my very first Triumph ever. And this baby has quick shifter, so we're gonna get in there. Interesting, interesting power. Uh, this baby has 121 horsepower. Whoa! All right, okay, all right, all right. What you know, like uh, as you guys know, I recently just got a new Monster 937, the Monster Plus, and uh, I feel like all the bikes are going to be compared against it, but. This thing has 121 horsepower, weighs about uh, 400, 415 or something like that pounds wet, and uh, has 78 newton meters of torque, which is actually not a lot compared to uh, like even a bike like my uh, Monster. Uh, and by not a lot, I don't mean like it's a slow bike by any means. It's a fast bike, fast as hell bike. But, um, yeah, I'm just a little bit surprised that more horsepower doesn't mean uh, more torque, which obviously is, you know, stating the obvious. Interesting. And it is true. The, the quick shifter is not as... Uh, Quick shifter is not as smooth as a Ducati quick shifter. Uh, something uh, that I was warned about. Interesting. And here we are. 
the bike is incredibly comfortable at 32 and a half inch inseam it actually uh bro okay all right my dude my dude is uh my dude the taxi driver is scared um okay i feel like i'm the most disheveled it's actually surprisingly warm i actually have uh some uh heated grips here which i was going to utilize but i don't think i even need to oh my goodness come on damn this baby pulls what a beautiful machine i'm right at home on it god damn it's so weird to see uh oh my boogers are uh splattering inside the helmet because i'm a mess all right that's fine the sound is dramatic very dramatic so 32 inch and seam you know it translates to surprising comfort I could literally ride this bike all day forever what a machine and the pole the pole is something else it's almost unfortunate that I got my uh, new monster before I rode this thing and not because I would have bought it but because I don't have a I wouldn't have had a reference because this thing pulls like nobody's business and nobody can tell you otherwise what's interesting as well the Brambos are uh, 310 in the back and two 80s uh, uh, 310 in the front and two 80s in the back which is kind of surprisingly small And by small, I mean smaller than the monster. Everything is compared to the monster now. It's all. It's all I know. It's all I know. I'm sorry. That's a very annoying thing to uh, do while reviewing a Triumph. But you've also clicked on a Ducati NYC vlog riding a Triumph. So you could not have expected a biased or unbiased review. The way this thing... No, go ahead. You're fine. Mm. Uh, the way this thing picks up speed is incredible. <laughs> what up, kid? I'm trying to see if I want to do a little uh, uh, photo shoot right here. Last time uh, with the bridges, it was kind of cute. Right over here. I have a feeling it's going to be all right. Look at this. All right, let's park the bike right here and then we'll uh then we'll discuss it a little bit and talk about it and whatnot. All right. So, this thing only has 500 miles on it and it's brand new. Obviously, we got full Olin's front and back, fully adjustable. What a gorgeous machine. All right, so before we leave this spot, let's talk about this bike a little bit. Let's discuss it because I feel like it's a little bit more scenic here in Dumbo than it is on that dead end block that I usually go to, which I'm still going to. So, like I was saying, we got uh, 
Brembo's front and back, adjustable suspension, all this cute little carbon everywhere, and this is the RS version, which is a little bit more souped up. Majority of it is stock, except for the mirrors and a little tail delete. What a gorgeous bike. And V's been around since like, this specific reiteration has been around since 2018, I believe, and 2007 is when they first were introduced to the market. And that sound, the, the triple sound is unmistakable. From my initial impression, yeah, uh, my buddy was right. The, uh, the quick shifter is a little bit, uh, is a little bit clunky. It's not as smooth as a Ducati, up and down. But what a comfortable bike. I literally like, usually I have the gift of gab and for some reason, I completely spaced out today. So how about this? How about we do and do the yapping and just do the brapping? And I don't even know what mode my bike is in uh, right now. I'm guessing, uh, let's check it out. Because I promised my friend I'm not gonna mess with the modes and I'm just gonna leave it as is. And it is kind of interesting that the bike actually tells you good morning and all that. You got the temperature. Uh, I'm guessing we're like in Corsa mode. Oh shit, track, rider, rain, road, sport, track. All right, that's pretty easy. We're gonna go back to road mode. That's what we need. We don't need any fancy modes at the juncture. Uh, I do have a low fuel light, so I am going to put in some gas. There we go. Weird. I think the kickstand was not uh, up all the way, but. And this, the fact that this thing is not even in a sport mode of anything, of any sort. What a gorgeous machine. What a gorgeous, gorgeous machine. Could I see myself riding one of these? Fuck yeah. Is this a good first bike? I'd say absolutely. Cause the, the, the power delivery is smooth. The brakes are a little bit grabby, which is surprising. Thank you. Recording. Good, good, good. Let's do a little pull on the old. Whoa, we're fine. All right. We're fine. It's chunky boy. Definitely needs gas. Definitely needs gas. We're gonna get gas immediately. 24 plus it's like I would imagine it's uh the the fuel gas the the gas mileage probably is computerized and adjusted just like uh on the new monster but technically I probably can do 50 miles on the gas that I have but the way I've been riding it's uh you know it's not realistic so let's get on the BQE and let's tuck in and uh do a tiny little pull Nothing intense, nothing insane. Thank you, sirs. Mind you, this is in uh, road mode. And this baby, uh, my friend just installed heated grips, so that's kind of nice. That's kind of uh, adorable. And these are Triumph grips, and look at the little cute button right there. It's perfect, it's really perfect. I gotta say, the clutch is nice and smooth, soft, easy. The brakes are grippy. The brakes are super grippy, and I wonder why that is. It really starts roaring when you get up into the higher RPMs. Let's try uh, 
Oh, it turns in really well. Ah, oh, damn it. Gee, many crickets. Sweet bananas of Lucifer's pride. Bro, this thing is a fucking violent little puller. What a violent little machine. And once it gets up in the RPMs, I mean, I'm not, I don't have enough freaking brain power to uh, get on the gas and uh, look down. So I'm not gonna try to perform miracles of any sort. Um, but uh, yeah, she pulls. She's a puller. This bike indeed pulls. And it's so easy to turn in and dip in. What a maneuverable machine. Uh, and the way I'm sitting, like, I'm completely comfy. I'm not pressurized anywhere. And look, we'll give her my end fourth. And there's plenty of pull. Gee, money, fuck. The sound is gorgeous. The sound is gorgeous. Suspension is a little bumpy, a little light, but I'm sure it's not adjusting to to my exact specif specifications. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm gonna do a. I'm gonna go to my block, the block that I finish all my reviews at. And then we see what happens. But at the same time, like, look, 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 look how chill this thing is. I can't get over uh, the thing sticking out. I keep looking down here and I keep thinking uh, there's a fairing loose or something or I don't know. Oh, I'm a fan. I must say. I do enjoy this thing. And the way it just fucking winds up. It's a gorgeous machine. Nah, I fucking made a mistake here. What a maneuverable and what a what a comfortable look i'm flat-footed which is interesting because this is 32 and a half and my knee is slightly bent my inseam is like 32 inches so uh so it's kind of uh gonna go get some gas and then we go to my block so bumpy the fucking good old race suspension bro so so bumpy and I picked the perfect ride for this shit mm, man this thing pulls I love this bike I'm a big fan I love the triples the power delivery is so smooth but there's still a little bit of that raw chunkiness that little bit of a raw, uh, the raw emotion of it. It's, it's hard to summarize my uh, thoughts on this bike, to be honest, just because uh, I've never ridden anything quite like it. And the fact that the suspension, uh, one silly thing that I was warned about is that you, once you fill it up with gas, it actually does not show it immediately. Man, it's weird. So happy I didn't bring my heated gloves because 
imagine if I can't even put these on anyway all right oh yeah see in van it fills up look like right now it's gonna go back up and the gas tank is actually uh, quite a quite a big tank it's a uh, 4.6 mile uh, 4.6 gallons which is not bad Jeez Louise We'll go to my block over here and do a couple of pulls and then we'll come back to my dead end block So weird how it's like climbing slowly. Bizarre. Bizarre little uh, style of gas tank management. But good enough for me. Good enough for me. And there's a cute little block over here that that I like to terrorize. Before I do one more tripod shot and and then we just summarize. I could a hundred percent see myself on this bike. That's just a fact. Here we go. Here we go. Jeez Louise. It pulls really weird. It is a weird puller. Like I, yes, I'm a, I'm in road mode, so I should probably not be con concerned or surprised by a goddamn thing. Plus, it's dirty around here. All right, we'll turn back around and uh, do pulls the other way. Just a quick one. Here we go. Fun little machine. Fun, troublesome, hooligan machine that will fucking make you lose your license for certain. But at the same time, it can be smooth and quiet as a cat. Yeah. That's right, my man. Jesus fuck. And this thing has obviously uh it has wheelie control, has traction control. It does not have uh lean ABS and traction control, which is uh kind of uh becoming a standard and whatnot. It does not have self-canceling turn signals. Mm. But the stock mirrors are actually semi-good. Alright, okay. Alright. Here we go. Here is my usual place for photo shoots and to finish the transition we will do that we will do that so here we are put this baby over here just like so just like that mm. <sighs> got a little bit dirty but what a machine what are my thoughts? The looks are a little polarizing, you know what I mean? You gotta admit, the looks are not for everyone, especially the weird little headlight. But it's actually, you know what, I don't mind. Because if you actually turn it on, let's see, turn it on. Because uh, it has these like little eyebrows on top. 
and uh, actually my boy was watching the video the other day and he surprised uh, confused this for a street fighter it was like no it's definitely not a street fighter but once you uh clean up those turn signals put on the proper exhaust and this is right here i believe this is the stock exhaust you know i believe this is the yep that's a triumph stock exhaust and that baby sings imagine this thing with a proper exhaust mm. and this right here my buddy put on because he's a ducati fanboy it doesn't actually come with that red sticker the brakes are good, grabby, way too grabby. Like, I don't know what it is. Maybe they, they need to be adjusted or something, but they're, they're, they're Yankee. Uh, doesn't really need bigger rotors. Mm. The plate is tucked in nice. Totally a solid bike. The paint job is a little crazy, but they also come in this uh, like weird bronze color as well, like the 007 version or whatnot. I love it. I love it. I'm a huge fan. I gotta say, like, I know I'm a, I, 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 I tend to hate on du Triumphs just for fun because a lot of my friends, A, there's a lot of Bonnevilles and Thruxtons and shit like that in New York City. And uh, they do have fake carb covers, you know, it's fuel injected bike with fake carb covers, you know, the, 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 the other Triumphs. But this one is a, is a street weapon. What did we learn? What did we learn about Triumphs and speed, or I mean street triples? The, the hype is real. The bike is legit. And uh, I don't know if you guys watch 44 Teeth, uh, this YouTube channel, but that dude rode this bike in anger on the track. And uh, it was no slouch. It was no slouch. So this is not a, this is not a slouchy bike. This is a proper, proper machine. I do like it a lot. And uh And here we are. So I'm actually going to uh cruise for a little bit longer and do a separate whole separate vlog. But I just want to let you all know that I am I am a fan. I am a fan. I do like this bike. Uh, I do enjoy it. And I'm actually gonna do uh, a list of all the bikes that I've done. And I'm gonna place this bike on that list. Obviously it's gonna be a little bit biased, but I gotta admit. And look, look at even at the graphics. The way it's like just spreads out like that. Dope dope all right ladies and gents we are doing something new today we're gonna do a a little q a session about the bike i got inspired by uh daily rider it's this revzilla thing they do when they ride their bikes and uh i asked some of you to provide some questions for me we're just gonna go through them that over there is lucas and both these bikes are his i haven't ridden this one yet but this is gonna be on another episode of Riding Bikes because I've ridden an SP before, but not with proper exhaust. So I haven't really actually heard what this bike sounds like, but let's get back to this one. So the first question is, I had the same bike. It's amazing, but I got bored. Is it just me or is it lacking character? That's a very intense question to start things off. And uh, you know what, honestly, I think it just, I think it's, very personal you know because what you're looking for from a motorcycle experience might be something very different than what i'm looking for so i i definitely don't think the bike lacks character and i think it's one hell of a machine i think it has a lot of potential if anything and if i actually had a lot of time with it i could see you falling in love with it it's a weird thing but you know if if you're especially if you love triumphs and if you love the looks and everything I don't know. I can't see myself getting bored with this bike, to be honest, but I also have a very different vision and taste. So next question. Would you consider getting something like the Street Triple? <laughs> uh, 
No, <laughs> not at this point in my life. I'm on a different path. I'm on a different journey at this moment. And there's probably like five different motorcycles I would get. I would consider a 2012 Street Fighter 848 before I get this bike. That's, that's where I'm at. Plus I just got a bike, so you know, I'm okay for now. Uh, initial impressions of Street Triple versus initial impressions of the new Monster. Well, it's very different because with the new Monster, it was very personal and I was like freaking out for different reasons. So I couldn't really feel what the bike was like. I just wanted to get it home safely. Uh, but to be honest, I felt more at home on this bike because my foot controls are a little weird. My seat is a little low on my Monster. So I got to change that. I got I to gotta work on a couple of things. Plus this bike sounds better out of the box immediately. So say if I wasn't biased against my new bike and I didn't have a new bike experience, I would think that this bike might be initially more impressive than the Monster with just the exhaust and the way it pulls. But now that I've ridden the Monster, you know, like I would say the Monster gave me a bigger rush initially. All of my answers are biased, so, so there's that. Um, try it for Ducati. I'm gonna skip that question. I'm skipping that question. You know the answer. How do you feel about the bug eye headlights? You know what's interesting about it? Uh, with, the, with the lights on and everything, with the LEDs, uh, I actually heard multiple people mistake it for a Street Fighter from the front because the Street Fighter has those weird little eyebrows. Obviously, in the daylight, it looks very different. These I don't mind at all. The previous uh, Triumphs with the perfectly circular ones, those I like, but the weird middle generation they had, not a fan. But these, these are great. I'm a, I'm a big fan. I love the front. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. No question. Just can't wait for your Triumph triple conversion. Oh boy. Yeah, that's not happening. Nope. Not anytime soon. Maybe in 20 years. Uh, what's it like not having your balls roasted? Well, that's a good question. Obviously today, all my rides in the last like, couple of weeks have been in like sub zero temperatures. I'm joking, but it's been like 40 degrees. You know what I mean? So I did not experience any heat issues on this bike or on my monster and my 620 is air cooled, which actually means uh, my 620 got up to like 270 degrees. Like literally my 620 would be at 250 to 40 regularly. So I don't think I'm going to experience the ball roasting that people talk about because I've experienced much vicious one before. So everything is just, you know, better. Biggest difference and similarities with the monster. It has to do with uh, suspension maybe or because the suspension is better on this bike, but it's all ones, you know, mine is just like non adjustable, whatever. Uh, it's a little rough. The, uh, the monster pulls better. I got to admit the monster is a little more violent and a little like almost obviously people are going to laugh at it but the monster is a little scarier this one is a little bit more timid even in sport mode which i'm sure people will disagree with um but the similar th this bike is more comfortable than the monster i'd say that but i'm also going to raise the seat on my monster and change the bars maybe because the geometry here is nice but similarities differences they're very similar beasts because you're looking at a naked sports bike that you can take anywhere you can ride a thousand miles on this thing like nothing uh is it comfy same maintenance cost as ducati's what about the exhaust comfy 100 percent, super comfy the seat is freaking awesome um and i even mentioned it obviously in the video everything about this bike is super comfy the foot position everything 100%. The exhaust sounds better than the stock Monster, but nobody's going to keep a stock exhaust. Like, you know, if you know anything about these babies, like if you're keeping a stock exhaust, that's fine. But I guarantee you, majority of the people will actually want to hear what the bike sounds like. I don't know what this bike sounds like, and I don't know what the Monster sounds like. And as far as maintenance costs, I would say it's the same. I can't imagine this bike being cheaper or more expensive than the Monster. You know, I think it's a very similar experience, to be honest. How do you feel it compared to your preferred bike, the Ducati? 
I mean, I think I answered that question five different ways already, but I obviously I'm a little skewed. So my love for my monster goes beyond rationale and like logic. I could see how if this was my dream bike and I love Triumph and I loved like if I got my hands on one of these, I'd be a pig and shit. It's fucking perfect. Nothing wrong with it at all. So, uh, but compared to my Ducati, it's no Ducati. Would it be a decent bike for city riding? Does it have those daily values? Uh, yeah, perfect, perfect commuter. And you know, and I've read a lot of reviews. This bike is perfect for beginners, experienced riders, people going far, wide, whatever you want to do. So, um, yeah, it, it's actually a great bike for that. When are you going to be doing a riding bikes episode with a sport classic? Well, I actually do have a friend with a sport classic. I have two friends with sport classics. So I just got to talk to them and get my lazy ass out and, you know, do that. What specs does the bike got to have to trade it for your Ducati? That's a very tough question just because uh, I'm at a place where I'm not ready to trade my Ducati, nor am I ready to trade my Allegiance. The, the bike just has to tickle me in the right place. The, the, the value you're talking about is very uh, personal. It's just, it's just your passion for the brand. Like people, you, you gotta be able to fall in love with something. And I think it's okay. Um, it's not really like the Ducati is the fastest, the uh, most reliable, the, the whatever it is. It's just like, I, it just stuck with me somehow. So it's not about what value, but it's more about how you feel. And the final question is obvious here and basically was the motif for the whole little Q&A we had. Is it better than the monster? And the answer is... Yes. No, no, what the fuck? No, the answer is no, it's not better than you. Are you kidding me? If you pick in between this and the monster, get the SP. Same Olens, comes with a dampener, right? Proper exhaust right away, better seat. Come on. We get the SP. No, 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 no. Great bike. I love this bike though. And I'm not, I, I know I sound like a hater and a lot of people don't know me personally. They think I'm some hating hater, but I'm not. I love this bike, but I still pick my monster or even a hyper. <laughs>